Hi, today's good person to know is Bonham Bo. He's Vice President for Global Media and Consumer Engagement at Mondelez International. And his talk was on how businesses should rethink their approach to accelerate growth and value. Bonham says 24% of people have mobile devices and yet only 1% spend on them and said there's tons of opportunity to exploit this and that by 2020, every single consumable item sold in the shops will be connected to the internet in some way. And so we need to have a hacker's mindset. We need to break things to create better value within our places of work, our processes and ourselves so that we can continually evolve and improve. Bonan says it's about training people to think differently and that marketeers and businesses have to seriously change. He demonstrated how they do this at Mondelez and how the various platforms enables them to accelerate their growth by breaking away from conventional methods. Now I have done a separate video on Cadbury's cream eggs, so do check it out. I'll put the link on the description. I hope you enjoy this video and that it inspires you to have a hacker's culture within your organization too. So thanks for watching. When we look at mobility and the growth of mobility, 24% of media is consumed on a mobile device, but less than 1% of spending. And so I would argue that there's this huge delta opportunity. We have become the most distracted society in human history. But the amazing thing about humans is that we'll never admit that we're distracted. I love this. It says, honk if you love Jesus, text while driving if you want to meet him. <laughs> so even our religious institutions understand the importance of mobility, but still big organizations have failed to adopt quickly. Very nice gray haired gentleman, Martin Cooper, who invented the mobile phone at Motorola. He believed that what he was creating was a device for us to transmit uh, voice. But in reality, what he was creating was a world of connected devices that would transform organizations, business, society, riches of some, uh, en masse. Actually, there's a great article in the New Harvard Business Review around connected devices and what it will change the business landscape. They said that by 2020, they believe that every single consumer packaged good that's sold in a grocery store will be connected to the internet somehow. Which means that when you think about the scale of products, billions and billions of products that we sell every single month, we might become some of the world's largest technology companies. We don't look like the world's largest technology companies. We don't look like Cisco. We don't think like Facebook. We don't operate at the speed of Twitter. We're not fast as like Snapchat. And so what we have to figure out is how do we as organizations begin to set ourselves up to take advantage of this future that lies ahead of us, a future which will be driven by accelerated growth. What this is driven by are how do we change the mindsets and the culture of our organizations in order to unlock that future. What we have to ask ourselves is as organizations, are we prepared to prepare the talent that we have inside of our four walls to compete? And I would argue that it's this unique growth of this notion of hacker. Somebody who programmatically takes a different approach to solve problems. And in fact, actually begins to break things to unlock greater value. How do we create value by breaking things? How do we break our organizations? How do we break our process? How do we break our traditional approach? And I personally feel the most important is how do we break ourselves? How do we make sure that we're reinventing ourselves on a continual basis to make sure that we're not only competitive, but we're also unlocking the greatest value possible? I wanted to look at where we thought the biggest opportunities for us to rethink the way we approach media work. We have to be very, very specific around the selections that we made of where to invest that money, specific to how we were actually gonna drive top line growth uh, for the business. And it started with one, increasing media ROI, and two, influence and purchase. The big buckets being reached, we knew that there were more eyeballs viewing this device, and how we begin to plan against that from a reach perspective, how do we begin to measure against that from a reach perspective, how do we make sure that those show up in our marketing mix models and that we're taking into account uh, that loss reach by, by gaining a better mobility, and also investment, so how are we doing equivalency? So there was a point in time where we were paying more for the same exact TV show, same exact 15 or 30 second spot, running on TV, sorry, paying more when it ran on mobile versus running on TV, and we have to break away from those models, and we changed our investment approach to get equivalency, so that we're buying, so a screen is a screen is a screen, not just from a consumer perspective, but also from a media investment perspective. I believe when we look at mobility, there will actually be a rise 
in platform ownership. Well, two brands came to me and they said, you know what, we really want to launch uh, our mobile games. I said, that's amazing. Let me introduce you to some folks that build mobile games for a living. Talking about monetization and owning that piece of media, holding yourself up to a greater standard, we had to create a game that A, advertisers wanted to advertise on, and B, you can actually buy virtual Oreos in here as power-ups, and I believe we're at about $150,000 of virtual map. This begins to give us a platform to begin to target with GEO. So we to think about the impact if organizations our size had platforms at that level, what you could begin to do, data collection, targeting, all those kind of things. Take you guys on a journey of what we've been doing from an operational standpoint. We think we want to just focus all of our efforts, all of our marketing efforts on Nilla, just on Facebook. You could take all of the data that they had on what the potential Nilla buyer actually looked like, and we could translate that into very targeted advertising. Grew that community from 16,000 to about 300,000. Then, in the beginning, as we started uh, growing that community, we also had to think different about creative. So we took five pieces of creative, and we and we launched with five different approaches. A real feedback loop from consumers to actually understand what creative really resonated uh, or resonates with them. Numbers, five times return on spend and 11.3 million households reach just by using the Facebook platform. How do we actually build a television integration from the ground up using Twitter at its core, knowing that we were also going to use Twitter as one of the main distribution channels as well as that core TV product. Uh, and so we partnered with Fuse, which is the number one music um, the number one music channel in the US and we built, uh, and Trident, and we built a, a program called Trending 10. Music is the second most talked about topic for 18 to 34 year olds on Twitter. Nobody wanted to watch the same 15 to 30 second pre-roll on 22 pieces of content every single day. So we had to figure out how to create more content at a faster pace and keep the content creation economics low. Using Vine creators is really the, the most native form of advertising you can actually do on Vine because these creators have big audiences and they know how to create at scale quickly. It's not only unique, the Twitter uh, opportunity is not only unique uh, to Twitter in terms of the combination of TV and Twitter, but you guys might have seen uh, a case that was run, I think Marketing Magazine talked about it, on what we did with Cadbury Cremate. But at the end of the day, none of this is possible unless you actually can begin to create a culture that embodies kind of the vision that you as an organization has and that creates runway and room for great people to actually change the models that exist inside your organization. And that's what we tried to focus on so much. One of those programs that we've done that helped us do that was a program called Mobile Futures. And the whole idea of Mobile Futures was how do we bring startups in to partner with our brands? How do we really learn from the culture of these new organizations that are sitting out there? And how do we have this culture transference? In order to make that happen, we forced ourselves to begin to actually operate like a startup.